I am totally getting on right now, not to just jibber jabber like I did last time, but to talk to you a little bit more about the meditation that um, I was working on last week. Hey, Kathy! I'm talking about the meditation that I was working on last week, um, which is a try. Well, there's three parts. Hey, Lindsay Sue. Three parts of the meditation, and they deal with different perceptions. The first deals with the visual the set and what we see. The second part of the meditation deals with what we hear. And the third part deals with what we feel. And the purpose of this meditation is to sync the three. So to sync up and to create a rhythm out of what is heard, seen, and felt. And I'm going to do a guided meditation. And in fact, when I do this meditation, no joke, no lie, I am transported to other worlds. Many times when I do this particular meditation, I have all kinds of really kooky, trans-dimensional or interdimensional experiences, which is why I want to give you guys the meditation. Um, and I'll probably make it free to everybody in the lab, probably, or very low price. But it's I, just recording this meditation trances me out. I wrote about it last week in the lab, and I said I, I was noticing as I was recording that I had an accent. <laughs> You know, and I've never really been a channel who channels in an Indian accent or an English accent. So it was really strange, and my voice was, was weird. So it took me a, a few times to get the recording correctly. But I want to kind of just tell you about the meditation first. Although the guided meditation, I think, is going to be super cool, mainly because Spirit told me. You guys can probably figure out the meditation on your own. So everybody out there hi, who wants to try this, I... I encourage you to do so. And I want you to do this meditation when you're tired. That is the best time to do meditations. And I know we run the risk of almost falling asleep or falling asleep and not being um, in control of the experience. But that's also that tranced out, almost going to sleep state of consciousness is a doorway to psychic experiences. And if we can keep control of that particular state of consciousness and observe at the same time, we can pick up a lot of information. So try to do this meditation when you're drowsy. Like, I don't know, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock every single day. I'm just, ugh. I get really drowsy, and that's a great time to go sit in a chair, put on some awesome, blissed out, white noise, frequency, solfeggio, whatever, and meditate for a half an hour. And I have all kinds of really cool experiences. So try to make sure you're, you're um, tired. And then what you do is you shut your eyes, and I want you to start looking for what you see behind your eyes. And although it varies from person to person, I think for the most part we all kind of see the same thing. And so when the eyes are closed, we sort of see what looks like a black screen, right, that's pixelated. And sometimes if we're passive, we can start to see what looks like those lava lamp lights these gold or these white lamps, uh, lights that start to move around behind our eyelids. Or we'll see some sort of closed eye light anomaly. And what you want to do is when you see that, you just want to follow it. Don't get all nuts and start chasing it and looking at it really closely. We're just being with it, but we are noticing it. And we want to stay with this visual for a while. I find, if I, I find what first happens is I see a bunch of pixelation and then if I calm down, get really neutral, then it starts to switch to these fluid light anomalies. And then I just try to meditate with those anomalies. If I look too close at them, though, I lose them. And it's kind of hard to get them back. So play around with it yourself. I would spend maybe five minutes on the visual portion of this meditation. And then when you've got it down, you've been following it, and you really know the rhythm of what you're seeing behind your closed eyes, now we incorporate another perception and we, we incorporate specifically sound. Now, the world around us makes one sound. I mean, I, we, I realize that that person's walking over there and you can hear her footsteps and here comes somebody with a shopping cart and you can hear that and he, people are talking and there are a lot of separate streams of sound, but you can turn it all into one sound 
by just observing it passively and listening to the sound of your world and the sound of your space. Of course, it helps to not be in a busy grocery store parking lot. You're sitting in your chair at four o'clock, drowsy. You've just spent five or 10 minutes watching what's behind your eyes. And now you're starting to just pay attention to what you hear. There is a rhythm to the sound of your world. There is a flow to the sound of your world. And just as we waited for the lava lamp lights, we wait to hook into the rhythm and the flow of the sounds. And we follow that. Just as we followed our visuals, we're now following the sound. And when we've got the rhythm and the flow of the sound, and this can be mixed up with your heartbeat and, and, and everything, inner and outer sounds, you then hook what you hear, your auditory, with what you're seeing. When I say hook, I mean I need you to join them. I need you to blend them. And so as the rhythm of the, of the sound comes through the ears, you notice that the, that the visual light anomalies move with that same sound. These are now blended and together. You hook them together. This is hard to explain, which is why I've really never done it. <laughs> but you'll know what I mean. When you put yourself in the space where you can do it, you'll know what I mean. You'll know exactly what I mean by the rhythm of the sound. You'll know exactly what I mean by the lights and you will know how to blend it. But you wanna hook them together so now it's just one perception. It's the perception of what's seen behind the eyes and what is taken in through the ears. And then hang out there for five or 10 minutes. Really figure out what that feels like for you in that meditation. Stay awake. And then after you've spent some time with it, what I want you to do, hey Justine, is now bring in the feeling of the physical body. We're all made of energy, right? At our core, we are just energy that's moving around at a specific rate. And that energy kind of buzzes, doesn't it? If you sit down in a quiet space and you just try to feel what your hand feels like or feel what your knee feels like or feel what your belly feels like. There is an energetic movement to your body, to your flesh. I want you to get into, get into touch with the buzz, the vibration. Hey, Justine. Hey, Jessica. Of your physical body. Hang out with this. You're perceiving now from the body. Hang out with this for a few minutes until you're really following the flow of energy. And mine moves all over. And when I'm paying attention to it, again, not chasing it because you repel it, but being with it instead and meditating with the buzz and the flow of your vibration. When you do that, you start really, the, the energy itself starts moving all over the body or it does for me. Now, once you've acquainted yourself with the movement of this energy, it's time to hook it into the first two. The first is the, hey, Brian, the first is the visuals. What are we seeing behind the closed eyes? We're seeing light anomalies. Everybody does. So hook the buzzing of your body, the energy and the vibration of your body into what you're seeing behind your eyes, which is hooked in at this point by now to what you hear. So now we have this three-way meditation. We are meditating with the sound, with the sight and the feeling of the energy of our body. This puts us into a profound state of relaxation, but what it also does is it opens up our psychic awareness zone. We all have them. You don't have to be a psychic in order to have a psychic awareness zone. We all have the ability to perceive on a higher and more expanded level. And so now that we have these three synchronized what we want to do is spend a few minutes with it, five, ten minutes. Let it flow one into the other, sound into the feeling, into the visual, into the sound, into the feeling, into the visual. And after you've spent a few minutes doing that, it's time to take the next step, which is to consciously control the situation. What we do while we're running all three, we don't stop, we change what we're seeing with our closed eyes and instead we see a screen like a movie screen or a black television screen, or it could be a pool of water. We just see a surface of some kind there amidst the lights, the lava lamp lights, but now we're erecting a screen as we're keeping everything synchronized. We're still hooked into the buzzing of our body, still hooked into the sound, still hooked into the lights, but we also have a screen. We've just placed it there. And stay with this for a minute or two be really comfortable. 
get that visual visualization very strong and solid in your mind's eye. And then at this point, what I do is I ask spirit to tell me whatever spirit wants to tell me. And spirit will typically do it by putting imagery on the screen. Sometimes though, the screen seems for me to be kind of just a doorway or a conduit for me to receive other types of information, to receive it in different ways, through my hearing, through my feeling, through epiphanies, downloads, etc. It seems like kind of a portal or a doorway to allow spirit to talk to me. But what I want you to do when you're doing this meditation is just watch the screen. And you can't mess this up. Something really crazy might appear on your screen and you might judge yourself and say, well, that's ridiculous. This didn't work. Don't do that because you're just, spirit is just priming the pump. The screen and the process is just the beginning stages of spirit getting information to you. Now, you still have to interpret that information. And it may take a few times before you understand what spirit is actually telling you as the imagery gets clearer on the television screen. Hi, say hi, baby. Oh, isn't he so handsome? Oh, my God. So handsome. That's me. I know it. I have routinely used this meditation, the trifold meditation, for rapid manifestation. I will put, I will project an image onto the screen or the surface of that which is a symbol for what I want to manifest in my life. And so if that's money, then I would have a symbol for that money. If it's a job, then I would have a symbol that perfectly represents that job. And I would project it at this point with all three going. Now we're just, it's all synchronized. It's like this machine or something is happening. Some, we're hooking into higher realities, higher energies, and higher dimensions. And this hook-in allows us to manifest at this very rapid level if we do it correctly. At this point, I project onto the screen a symbol for that which I want, and I hang out there for a while. I hang out in the energy of that. I flesh out the image that I projected. I make sure the colors are right. I make sure the feeling of it is right. And I allow that, too, to hook into what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling. Like, I just keep the machine going. And I will hang out with that visualization for probably about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And then after that, I will break my meditation. Powerful technique for manifestation.